He almost crushed my fingers. That's how strong this man is. He'll tell me what exactly he's doing. Even in boxing, I mean, he's dedicated much of his life, though, to the administration of multiple sporting disciplines. A previous arts, sports, science and culture award winner. He's also served... Hey, I can't even stop, man. You know, when you talk about serving the sport with the plum and passion, it's exactly what he's done. Not only has he participated in more than 10 Comrades Marathons, uh, but he's also an avid motorbiker. In the words of Dr. Sam Ramsamy back then, describing him as a genuine patriot, he is an iconic figure in South Africa's rich sporting history. And I guess as hashtag MSW, we feel very, very honored, incredibly honored uh, to have Mr. Raymond Hack as our guest today and to learn from that wealth of experience that I've just briefly described. Does even describe a fraction or a percent of his journey in life. Raymond Hack, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you, Robert. But I think you're describing the wrong person. <laughs> it has to be this person. because It might be the wrong person because... I could describe you for over 45 minutes, and that still would not be enough. Oh, thank you. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. All good. All good. What do you do, though? Be honest with me, because you can switch on to the YouTube channel, guys. By the way, it has been covered live, and uh, if you think I'm messing around with you, you're looking very strong. You're looking very healthy. I know, as I said, you've done, what, 10? Is it 10 Comrades Marathons? Yeah, I was fortunate enough to be able to have done 10. Um, I have do um, off-road bike, uh, mountain biking, I swim, I do a bit of gym, and a I keep... A bit of gym. I keep healthy. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of gym. Come on, Raymond. But that is, that's great. I don't even know where you manage to get the strength. What is the major motivation? Let me go back to the, the Comrades Marathon, because everybody says that you've got to have an ultra-crazy mentality to be able to do it. Maybe once, some people want to do it once in their lifetime, Others cracked too, but to do it 10 times, what was the motivation? Well, I think I was uh, in, lucky enough to have a lot of good guys around me. Uh, we had a club called Rocky Roadrunners. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we used to run every day. And um, that was basically the reason for doing it. And then once you get into comrades, you can't get out of it. And once you've done an up, then you've got to do a down, and then you've got to do number three, and then you've got to be able to say to everybody, you know, why did you bother to get up if you're running such a slow time? Yeah. You should have stayed in bed. And it becomes <laughs> a lot of banter. And um, no, in the era that I ran, uh, there were good guys around me. Sure. And uh, it was great running. It, it's a great social event. Uh, you meet unbelievable people. You make great friends. Um, and then you just carry on running from there. You talk about times, though. Do you remember what your best time was? Uh, 6.11. 6.11? Yeah. I came 25th once. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. Th that's like... 6'11", 6'17", yeah. I ran my first one with a guy. Uh, he was a comedian by the name of uh, Len Davis. Yes. If you remember yeah. him. Len Davis had a crop of hair like you've never seen before. And when we were running, he before we got into the stadium... Uh, we would always, he would always say, no, wait for me. I have to comb my hair first. Oh, no. And he had to comb his hair. And when you wanted to go faster, he said, no, 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 you've got to run with me. And I ran my first comrades. I think it was 10, 17. I said, I will never stay on the road that long again. And I never did. I then came down. I was fortunate enough to get uh, eight silvers, two bronze. Uh, and I had good guys running with, with me. And it was just the fun and the camaraderie that's not fun and <laughs> camaraderie when you're doing and clocking six hours for comrades. I mean, that is like Bruce Fordyce type thing. No, um, no, no. Bruce was a lot faster. Bruce and a uh, guy used to run with uh, Alan Robb. Yes. Uh, they were the 525, 535 guys. Uh, the Raymond, first that's 10. like an hour's difference with, with the top hitters in the world. You know, your Lupin Fowles were there. You know, your William Dollars later on, they were there running crazy hours. But, I mean, I've got to give it to you. I did not know that you had a time like that. No, well, I got lucky. <laughs> There's no luck. I was able to do it. <laughs> okay. And which run was that? Was that the one with the poly shorts giving you a tough time, no? Uh, no, no, no. That was, uh, it was the up run going into Maritzburg. Yeah. 
and um, and then the other one was the down run where they made it a, a lot longer. I think it was 92, uh, 92.2 kilometers that time. I know I joked with you off air and I said, you know, Wally Hayward ran until forever. Well, you're not tempted. I mean, 10, yes. You, you got to double figures. You know, you must know when your time is enough. <laughs> you know, you passed your sale by date. Uh, it's, it's time for the others. And you, you've got to do what you enjoy. Yes. And, you know, when it becomes a burden and you're not enjoying it, you don't do it. I think you, you, fa you fast-track my mind, though, when you say you should know when, when the time is right. And it reminded me of the words back in 2010. And we were expecting Raymond Hag to continue with this job as the CEO within the South African Football Association, for example. And in, in the words of Kirsten Nematandani, and everybody was saying, has Raymond Hack resigned? Has he been pushed? Was he fired? And I he was said, never fired. And he <laughs> said something like, no, Raymond has run his race. So that's why when you say those words, it reminded me of what Kirsten Nematandani, the then president of SAFA, had to say. I, my time was up. I had done what I was asked to achieve at that yeah. stage. And, you know, I believe in succession. Uh, there was a new... There was a new management. Kirsten had come in with mm -hmm. his style of management. I was used to the management of uh, Dr. Oliphant, sure. uh, Dr. Causa. Uh, I subscribed to the way they thought at the time. And to go and get involved with people who had a different mindset, uh, it wouldn't have been fair. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'd done the job. Uh, I left with, as far as I'm concerned, a good reputation. Uh, no fingers were ever pointed. And I'm one of the lucky ones because uh, we ran a good ship and I think we had good uh, administrators at that stage. Uh, whether you've got them now, uh, well, that's a debatable question. Um, <laughs> but what do you think, though? I mean, you can't just tease me with that and say, well, whether or not there's some good administrators now, especially at Safa. I mean, Safa was, became your home. I know Wits, we'll get to Wits University, your, you know, the original home, the non-existent, the now defunct Budweis Witz or Witz University as it was then. But what do you make of the 19th of April 2024 South African Football Association administration? In my opinion, and it's my opinion, I think we've gone backwards. Totally How far backwards. back? How far back? Um, I think we've lost everything that we, we were able to achieve in uh, 2010. Um, I see no succession. I see no young blood coming through. Mm. I see no... Um, excitement. You've just got to look at our teams. Um, you know, a lot of people say Banyana, Banyana. Yes, they're fantastic. But Banyana, Banyana, you know, you've got Cecil. Cecil have been in, I know, because I did the agreement with uh, Dr. Oliphant at the time. I know what they wanted to achieve and they've done it. But the rest of it, no. I think football has gone back. Uh, there are no heroes in football. You know, uh, show me somebody like a teenage Dalda and Ace Manini, uh, uh, Computer Lamola, Joe Masono, uh, Ace and Suleng. Ace and Suleng. Uh, you, you, Pats you and can Banda. name them. Pats and Banda. Yeah. You, you can name them. Uh, great players, Tiki Corza. Yeah. Um, you know, Jan Le Shaba. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Peter Balak was there. There was Stuart Lilly. Yeah. And I'm I mean, bringing about an amalgamation had, of different races that were playing, you know, sport. You would know the Mike Lamberts yeah. of this world. They were there. You, you had Rodney Bush, Richard yeah. Kellett, uh, uh, we had uh, Jimmy Cook, even you Jimmy know, Cook, playing cricket uh, on the one side, playing football on the other yeah, side. R Rodney Anley, we had Dave Watterson, we had yeah. Gary Bailey, we had Richard Goch. You know, we had great players. If I look today, uh, even the, the Lucas, the former singers, mm. uh, there's nobody. You know, <laughs> okay, people Post will say that, yeah. Percy Tau. Yes, Percy Tau's a good player, mm. but he, he's he's not, for me, he's not a role model. Uh, you know, if you had to go to Orlando and you had to see the way the fans went around uh, teenager, went, uh, rider, Jomo, uh, you know, you don't get that today. Uh, they, you don't get a Lucas. Um, and who do I blame? I blame the administration because I say they didn't put things in place to get us to that situation. We haven't qualified for anything, yeah. whether it be the under 17, the under 20, the main team. So, But that's my personal opinion. You know, uh, people will say it's, sour grapes. I don't believe it is. Uh, I say your time is up. Mm -hmm. You've been in the sun a long time. Move off. Give other people a chance. Is that a direct 
word to Danny Jadon. No, uh, you know, Danny must do what he thinks is best. Mm -hmm. But he he's the leader. He's a he's a sofa president. He believes uh, he's on the right path. It's not for me to criticize yeah. him. Uh, you asked me the question: Do I think football is uh, at an advanced stage in 2024? My opinion is no. But then, who who or what should change though? Because we look at you for that level of of knowledge, guidance. You having been there, you having been at the forefront of a failed bid for us to host the World Cup. And you understand, it was too early. Germany, you know, yeah. whatever Charles Dempsey did or didn't do, it was okay. I also thought too early. 2010 was the right time. Correct. You know, it was the right time for us to win it. But it was a success even for us to be in that bid as late as it went, that it went to just literally one vote that one man who's now late did not take. So that is all part of a success. I look at these Simba Four Nations tournaments that used to be held um, whether that, that was even by the time Sticks Moreira was still in charge, but it, it all fed into the time you were there as a leader. Those are success stories that we see. But if we had to look for answers now, and the younger generation is listening to Raymond Hag right now and saying, what needs to change? What does? Well, I think you need to have young people coming in. Uh, I think the Elder people, if I can use that word, need to be able to give them the opportunity not to block them. And I think what has happened, um, a person like Lucas, Lucas should have tried to get onto the SAFA executive a long time ago. The fact that he may have been blocked and people were, I'll say, jealous or people were, were afraid of him. Uh, football is bigger than an individual and people have to understand that. You're not there for yourself. You're there for the sport. You have to leave a path. Uh, Dr. Causa always said, create your own path, leave it. Whether you're right or wrong, it's your path. You follow that path. But if you keep on uh, preventing people from coming in uh, or allegedly preventing people and not giving younger people the opportunity, uh, there's supposedly, what, 52 regions mm -hmm. in South Africa. Are you telling me that there's not one single person uh, in those 52 region who has a passion for the game and wishes to advance himself. Uh, I don't accept that. People would say as a counter, and we've heard this because we've tried to cover the stories around the leadership of SAFA, is that you know, Lucas should go and bide his time, be part of the LFA so that he can get the vote, then that vote elevates him to the bigger national seat. Is that the only way in the way South African football is structured for a brand new leader to come through. Otherwise, we get these recycled so-called leaders that will keep coming in and out. In terms of their constitution at the moment, yes. But people have to be strong enough to yeah. say, our constitution needs to change. Um, you know, if, if I look at swimming, if I look at other sports, there's an age limit. Uh, you cannot participate if you're over a certain age. Uh, you should not have more than two terms or three terms. Um, I've just been involved with, I'm involved in swimming. Mm. We've just done the African Aquatics Constitution. Uh, you cannot serve more than three terms. Uh, you cannot be of a certain age mm. to sit on the executive. So that gives you an opportunity to come in and get younger people. And yes, you, you have your current president, but he should be able to guide mm. new people to say, okay, I've had my time. I need you to come in. This is what you do. Watch me for the next four years. See what I do. Come in with your own ideas. Uh, I'll guide you. And that's how you get new people. As like to shadow the person yes. and see how the day-to-day -day yes. workings are. But should Lucas not imply himself? Like, for example, while he waits for what I call the inevitable, because I really think that he'll end up somewhere in a leadership role within the structures, should he not, in the meantime, empower himself? You know, go and educate get an additional, you know, learnership and administration. Well, he probably, something. He probably uh, yeah. is. I don't know what he, what he does. But if you look in Africa, uh, you know, you, you've got George Weir, for yeah. example. Liberia. Uh, you've got mm. top players, uh, Diop, who's uh, in the Senegal. Mm. You, you've top players who've gone in. They know what the challenges are. Samuel Eto'o. Uh, Samuel Eto'o. Mm. Uh, you know, if you don't know, put strong people around you to assist you but have a young, a different person coming in to help us grow. You know, if, if I look, 
if, if we took Patrice Motsepi out mm. of and the Motsepi Foundation out of football at the moment, what have you got? I'll tell you what you've got. You've got nothing. Hashtag MSW live now. on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live at the same time. Hashtag MSW. What's a Thursday without Lotto Star's real jackpot race? We are bringing you the hottest slots in a thrilling race where a share of 500,000 Rand could be yours. The jackpot is guaranteed to hit. Join the race every Thursday evening from 7 to 9 p.m. You could be one of 500 lucky winners. Lotto Star, your world of live games. Lotto Star is licensed by the Mpumalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18. NRGP 0800 006 008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed odds betting events. Um, it has a rock. Shiny. Mmm, please pass me a drumstick. Come on, baby, focus. A girl's best friend. A diamond? Yes, yes, on a round metal. Time! A ring? He's asking you to marry him. Create big moments with the fam when you grab the new KFC Family Fiesta. Dig into six pieces of original recipe chicken, four zinger wings, two regular mash and gravies, and large chips for only $149.90. KFC, it's finger licking good. Delivery fees are not included. T's and C's apply. Which premium range of SUVs has it all? Haval H6 is the answer. From the stylish and reliable H6 to the eco-friendly, fuel-efficient HEV, or even the exhilarating GT, there's one for everyone. Drive the H6 model of your choice from just 6,099 Rand per month. 10% deposit over 72 months at prior minus 2.65% with the 40% balloon. Visit haval.coza forward slash office for full T's and C's. Haval H6 SU. UVs, intelligence in motion. Capture iconic moments with the brand new Redmi Note 13 series. Choose from the Redmi Note 13, 13 Pro, or the feature packed 13 Pro Plus 5G from just 329 Rand per month. When you get any Redmi Note 13, get a Xiaomi Smart Tech device from just 9 Rand per month. Available now at Vodacom Online and in stores nationwide. Visit vodacom.co.za for more. Redmi Note 13 series. Make every shot iconic, every day legendary. T's and C's apply. The cost of living crisis is real. Here's what one insurance client did about it. I'm Amy. I'm 26 from Kenilworth. When I got my 2022 Ford EcoSport, the immediate thought was to buy an insurance and I pay only 800 and 19 rand per month. No insurers were able to beat or match the premium that I'm currently paying. Want a car insurance premium that will blow your mind? SMS out to 30601 now for a quote and to find out about included benefits like panic assistance that sends the nearest medical or armed response unit to you wherever you may be 24-7. Here's Yusuf. 45 years old from Teichadal, Western Cape. I pay 700 rand for my Polo 1.6 2021 model. If you haven't called our children's here, definitely get in touch. Give it a go. SMS out to 30601 now. That's out to 30601. Outurance is a licensed insurer and FSP. T's, C's and limit supply. Premiums are risk profile dependent and reviewed annually. Client comments do not constitute financial advice. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, Coach Alan Fries, what a pleasure, man. Welcome to the show. It's been a while, Baba, man. Good to see you. When you're away from the TVs, people think you retired. Out. You're down out. <laughs> <laughs> what is uppermost in your mind? I've got this task uh, that I've been given to try to get Highlands Park to the next level, which is, in a, which is the NFD. How easy or tough is it? In the castle, people want to go to the ABC Mutsepe. Yes. ABC Mutsepe. We want to go to the NFD. Right. People in the NFD want to go to the PSL. Everybody wants to get to the top. So it can be easy. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. All right, do send us your WhatsApp voice notes. Uh, Raymond Hank is my guest, 0607080484. It's a Friday edition of Hashtag MSW, wherever you are listening to the show, watching the show on the YouTube channel. You can post your comments there as well. So plenty of options to get in touch with the man that we are celebrating today, his input, the legacy, and who exactly is Monsieur Raymond Hack. But you know what? I don't know if you're ready, though, for the Showmax Premier League this weekend. I am. You know why? This weekend's going to be a football feast. And here is what you and I can look forward to. 
you got good old Sheffield United. They're going to be playing Burnley. Burnley need all the points, as you know. Those are two teams rock bottom of a bucket full of crabs called relegation. But does either of those teams have claws? Hmm. Can they claw their way out of that relegation? That's the big question. I think from a South African perspective, you and I would want a Burnley to survive for obvious reasons. What about Luton Town? They've got a chance as well to pull themselves out of potential exile. They're going to be taking on Brentford, who themselves could move a little bit closer, though, to the top 10. Their game has changed. Results have looked good. Whether it's Ivan Tony scoring or not scoring, but they've been doing very, very well. There was a stage where it was, took a bit of a slump, uh, Brentford. And also, after beating Liverpool, Crystal Palace are going to be playing host to West Ham, who were just kicked out of the Europa League by Leverkusen. And speaking of the cottages, though, they got a chance, just a little bit of a chance to get their leg against Liverpool, who are also coming off that shocking Europa League exit last night. Hey, Jurgen Klopp, unfortunate for him, bows out in his final season at Liverpool from European competition, just like that. But they got themselves to blame, though, if you look at what happened last week. But also remember... From the farmer's market to your paddle game as well, wherever you are this weekend, be like me. Catch all the action live from your phone. It's as simple as that. From your phone, subscribe to Showmax Premier League for only 69 rand a month. I am not joking. 69 rand and you're a boss. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Hi, Rob. This is Enu from Rodipot. Rob, I would just like to greet uh, Raymond Heck in studio and also like to say that, you know, most of us will remember him as one steadfast, uh, quite resolute and uh, trusted, you know, um, soldier at a time, you know, saving uh, Dr. Mulifi Oliphant and Dr. Ivan Koza, Rob. And just one question from him. You know, um, if he had to look back and, uh, you know, he reflects on his tenure, um, what uh, things that he believed that at the time they could have been done differently? you know, to save football. I think uh, we know that uh, there were many successes like bringing the World Cup, you know, which was the biggest, biggest highlight, you know, in our South African football. But if there's one thing that he believes that it could have been done better at that time, what could it be? Thank you. Andrew from Redbot. Andrew at Redbot, thank you so much indeed. Raymond Hack, my guest. How do you respond to that, Raymond? Um, probably going back to what I said, yeah. having, I would have brought uh, younger people into football. Uh, I had fantastic people working with me um, at that, Barney Kujani, Pinky Lahota, Dennis Mumble, mm. great people. But uh, I don't think at that stage we realized that you needed new blood. Right. Uh, and certainly if we would have had that new blood at that stage, I think the administration would have been a lot more stable. Do you think you might have overstayed or the group would have overstayed their welcome? No, I don't think they would have overstayed. Yeah. I, I think they were there, had a purpose. Uh, they believed, they were passionate. And I think uh, they acted as a family. Uh, there was never any confrontation. There was never any uh, going one side as opposed to the other side. I never had any incidents when I was the CEO there. I had the support of Dennis. I had the support of Pinky. Uh, Barney Kajani was great. Uh, we had Solly Pasha who was the Pasha. Uh, we, we had personalities <laughs> yeah. there, but they were there for the benefit of the game. Mm. Uh, they then weren't there for financial gain. They loved the game, no matter what it, it threw up at us. Um, and for me, that was important. So could we have done it differently? Uh, yes, maybe if we would have brought in more people, mm. uh, the administration would have been stronger and there wouldn't have been uh, the gap that I believe there was from the time that we left to the time that there is now. Tell me about the leadership, though, of a man that's really not seen publicly these days, but whose impact would have been felt, especially by yourself, because you worked in the same building you'd have had as council and vice versa, Dr. Malifi Oliphant. Uh, listen, I would serve him anyway. Um, he, he, he had a great personality. Uh, he got me to read a book by a gentleman called Stephen Covey. Mm -hmm. uh, he believed in Stephen Covey's philosophy. Um, he was quiet spoken, 
Uh, he never raised his voice. He never got upset. If a mistake was made, uh, he would find out the reason and say, well, do better and do it. And between him and Dr. Corza, um, great administrators, I know what they've achieved and I admired them. And uh, I never, ever had a harsh word with either of them, ever. I've never had a harsh word with Dr. Corza in all the time. And I've known him for over 50 years. That's crazy. Ever wondered what Dr. Malifi Oliphant thinks about you? Um, okay, if- well, while you're arming... <laughs> I have known Raymond Heck for over three decades, from the old days of the National Professional Soccer League, when he was representing Vets University, and also serving on the committee of the National Professional Soccer League, and later on being a member of the National Soccer League, and later on represented the league on the South African Football Association Executive Committee. But what is remarkable about Raymond was when he was the acting CEO of the South African Football Association, and he acted in that position for two terms, if I may put it that way, from 2001 to 2004, and later on from 2005 to 2010. And I must say that Vermont has been an asset to South African football, and in particular to South African Football Association. And during his tenure of office as a CEO, the association acquired quite a number of sponsorships. And I want to mention the two main ones, that is APSA and SAB, South African Breweries. The total amount of both sponsorships per annum was 100 million rand. And that is the effort of Roman, Roman Hack that you should be in a position to acquire those sponsorships. And I also remember that she played a very important role in us renewing the sponsorship of Adidas. For Adidas being the technical sponsor of SAFA, she was always committing between Germany and South Africa to attend to the details of the contract. And as you know, as a lawyer, she has always been meticulous. We look at the final details and make sure that the Football Association was protected in all his dealings with uh, third parties, with sponsors, and also those companies we associated with SAS. I must also mention that during his tenure, he managed to convince Netcare to give SAFA shares amounting to four million at four and fifty cents per share, and he got those shares for nothing. And that was Simon Heck. I know during his tenure of office, not comparing him with any other person. But it is important to note that uh, financially our association was on a sound footing and he left a legacy. We had Metropolitan as one of the sponsors of SAFA. We had SASO. Initially, SASO was sponsoring our under-23 national team, that is the Olympic team. And later on, Raymond told SASO that the focus should be on women. That is how you see today SASO is sponsoring Banyana Banyana. Sure. You're absorbing all of that. You're listening very carefully. And it's, um, I mean, if he was a principal, you'd have been A plus, A plus plus. You were there to do a job, and that's what I did. I believed in the association. Yeah. I believed that the only way that we could improve was to get uh, sponsorship at that stage. I was fortunate. I had people like Mohammed Mubarak, who was in charge of finance, who yeah. watched every single cent. Uh, As I said, the people that were involved at that stage had a passion for football, which goes beyond football. And uh, that's that's the reason of our success. And I think the reason why we were successful with the sponsors is because they accepted what we said. Mm. Uh, We never had a fight with any sponsor. Uh, We never had a problem with any players uh, in regard to payment of things. Mm. We never had any debts uh, that we couldn't cover. And we never went beyond our budgets. I mean, when he talks about APSA as well as South African breweries, um, I saw a very broad smile on your face. But it's also just the figures back in those days where you would be able to cumulatively bring in 100 million rand between SA breweries as well as APSA. What was that driving force? What was it about those two big institutions that made them have confidence in the product called football? Well, I, I think it was the fact that when we approached them, uh, we were honest with them. We told them what our plans were. I mean, I remember when we broke away from um, uh, the National Professional Soccer League. At that stage, I was the vice chair of the National Professional Soccer League under George Tarby. Yes. Uh, I went with Kaiser. 
and we went to SA breweries. Uh, there was Peter May, um, the, the, the people that were there. They knew our record, and if we said we would do A, uh, they knew we would do A. Uh, they never had to worry about it. We gave them undertakings of what we could do and what we couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And I think we were honest, and they, they knew that we were there for the benefit of the sport. We weren't there for our own benefit. Uh, we never took any commissions. We never got paid any commissions. Mm. Not one single cent did we ever get paid for raising those sponsorships uh, because that was part of, of, of my job at the time. I mean, you mentioned George Tabe. And you go back to those days. Do you believe today that he was a dictator? He, he, George Tabe, <laughs> to me, was... Okay, and I know a lot of people disagree... There was a gentleman called Dave Schneer yeah. who was in charge of the so-called white football at that stage. And I think uh, he had a very strong influence on George Tarby. Um, and I think he prevented George. George Tarby did a lot for football. Yes. Uh, the fact that uh, he was under the apartheid government at that stage. Yes, uh, you know, that was the time uh, he thought he was doing the right thing. But... Um, I think there were outside influences which prevented George Tarby from seeing the future. When we left the National Professional Soccer League, uh, it was a chap, Valley Mishlangu, Kaiser, mm -hmm. myself, uh, Cyril Kobus was there. And uh, the attitude at that time was go. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an attitude of what is best for football. They didn't believe we would succeed. There were so-called two Orlando Pirates, so-called two Morocco Swallows, uh, we had the China Longani incident. Uh, we had that. Park, the stabbing. Yeah, but yeah. we we had committed leaders. David mm -hmm. Chabedi was there. Um, if I look at the people, uh, uh, Bantu Holomisa was there. I mean, he banned me from coming to <laughs> Umtata because we sent them into relegation one year. Oh, but who? I've still got General Bantu Holomisa. <laughs> yeah, he banned you. <laughs> yeah, he told me I can never come there. <laughs> but he. <laughs> He, he, he was a, we had good football people, sure. Henry Mishlangu from Whitbank, uh, Dr. Mutlana from Benoni United. Uh, we had good people and they believed in the sport and the sport had to grow. And uh, I think under George Tarby, it could never have grown to the extent that it is today. I mean, those I mean, colourful characters. I mean, you're Clarence Mlokotis of oh, this world, Clarence, 16 Miley, who yeah, was there China. as the chairman. You know, you talk about China, Shangwani, I think in full view of the entire country, that stabbing... I think just literally slash for slash into the body, the whole country got to see. I had never seen anything like that in my entire life. But it, yes, it, the negativity was around there. Yeah. But it showed the passion to move of, forward. To move forward of what people were prepared to do. I mean, Kaiser will tell you. Uh, um, Valley Mishlanga will tell you. We got plenty of threats when we broke away there. Mm. Uh, they'll come and kill you, and they'll come and stab you, and they'll do this, and they'll do that. Uh, but the people believed, uh, you know, there had to be a pathway forward. When I look at what Dr. Kors has done with the Premier Soccer League, right. I mean, I was involved with him in the st start with Kaiser. Uh, he sent me to London to go and get Trevor Phillips. Yes. And, you know, the Bulldog at, at the time. Uh, they had a belief stronger than anything else. Mm. And their belief paid off. <sighs> Crazy, because I think a lot of people don't know. You mentioned the late Cyril Kurbas because he was certainly in the forefront of it. And you got to go back to January 1985. And it had to take that one incident again involving Kaizam Daung and where they wanted to then get a percentage. I think it was about 10% of the gate takings when they had that charity game for both Jomoson as well as Ace and Zuleng. Yeah. And that almost put paid to saying, but why must we be the cash cow as opposed to you guys going to grow football as a whole. And I think that's where the journey uh, really began as far as entrepreneurship, uh, the marketability of the game, and to take it in a different way. And that is why after the break, we continue with more tributes, though. And I've got to thank as well Dr. Malifi Olifant uh, for sending through. He heard we've got Raymond Hack in studio. He said, I, I can't miss this one. I've got to pay my tributes. I've got to thank the man. And I've got to give him his flowers while he's still alive. You can do the same. Hashtag MSW live on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live at the same time. Hashtag MSW. Hollywood Bets is ready to take you to the skies with Aviator. 
clear for takeoff and your chance to win up to 10 million rand per flight with instant results every 90 seconds and multipliers that keep you on the edge of your seat. Bet online now. T's and C's apply. Hollywood Sportsbook is a licensed betting operator. Hollywood Bet supports responsible gambling. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. Winners know when to stop. South African Responsible Gambling Foundation toll-free counseling line 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp help to 076 675 0710. Stay connected and stylish with the new Huawei Nova Y72. Get it for only 479 Rand per month on a 24-month Elevate 2 contract. Add a Huawei Band 8 for 50 Rand extra per month. Go in store or call 084145. Valid until 14 May. Switch to Celsi today. Now on SA's most reliable network. T's and C's apply. Celsi. Change your world. Is your name justice? But you know nothing about the justice system. Have you never said honorable words like all rise and overruled? Was the last time you had a case back go high school, the one that carried your books? Do you find that the only time you are wearing a gown is before you sleep? Do your friends call you chief or justice, but never ever chief justice? Do you hear the words subpoena and think it's a sports reference about making a substitute? Do you, like most of us, feel like your family has given you a name that's just too much to carry? Then this meal is for you. Get the family full house meal from Chicken Licking with eight pieces, two salt fries and two sides. That's at least one thing that will make your family proud. Chicken Licking. Soul food. What do we want? Better car insurance. When do we want it? We want it now. How much are we willing to pay? Six ninety nine. Exactly. Pay just six nine nine per month for flat rate insurance when you buy any new Polo Vivo through Volkswagen Financial Services. Join the Volkswagen family today by heading to your nearest dealership. T's and C's on vw.co.za. Volkswagen. Share the ride. So I showed my car with my way, and yo, my nights out have been way more epic. Because with WeDrive Take Me Home service, someone drives me and my car home. I book a WeDrive trip on the MyWay app, and just like that, I get a personal driver. Now that's value for money. Move for value. Move to MyWay today and get six free WeDrive trips with MyWheels Comprehensive Insurance. For a quote, visit myway.co.za or SMS MOVE to 44430. MyWay is a licensed non-life insurer and FSP. Standard rates and T's and C's apply. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, Coach Alan Fries, what a pleasure, man. Welcome to the show. What was it about Rulani that then makes him stand out at such a young age, at such a big club, dominating by miles, where sundowns are right now? He educated himself. That's it. He went overseas to educate himself. Yeah. He took time, I don't know, maybe at home, to educate himself. Mm. When they sent him to Chippa, he learned there mm. the hard way. It's part of the learning curve. At Pirates was part of the learning curve. So he's really educated himself. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Right, Friday Legends Night, uh, wherever you're listening to the show, watching it on the YouTube channel, getting your comments uh, coming through. You got Debojo on hold there from the East Rand. Going to get to you in a second, Debojo. But also on X, eh? Twitter, whichever one you still want to call it, Uzwelandile says, I am enjoying your show driving from Standerton to Middleburg. All the best to Sundowns, and obviously Sundowns uh, who are going to be, hey, spearheading the Champions League. Champions League, yeah, we certainly wish them everything of the best, representing not only the the club, but also the country. Bongani says, Safa, under the leadership of Raymond Hack, was financially healthy, no scandals or bickering with PSL coaches under his tutelage as a CEO. So, more tributes pouring in. The man is right here in studio. Let's find out. Rodney Berman. I'm just privileged to have been so closely associated with Raymond over so many years and have witnessed his incredible journey in the sporting world he loves so much. I'm sure Robert has been given a copy of Raymond's CV, 
which is truly remarkable when you look at it. The committees and organisations he represents as chaired and is a prominent member of. You know, Raymond is truly, I don't think people realise, he is a great South African ambassador carrying the South African flag so proudly um, on all the international org- organisations he plays such a prominent role in. And sadly, I don't think his achievements and accomplishments for this country have been truly recognised. Sure. Rodney Berman, I thank you so much indeed. I haven't seen you in a minute, Rodney. I hope you're strong and well and family is strong and well as well. I mean, what a what a tribute. And I do agree with what Rodney Berman is saying is that I don't think that we've celebrated your achievements, your journeys, your legacy as much as we should. But that's why you're here tonight. You know, it's not about what I've done. It's about what people think. And at least I've been able to do something that I'm happy about. It's not about getting the accolades or anything. Mm. You have to have a passion uh, for sport. I've been very fortunate that I've had that passion and I've had good people around me and uh, my family have allowed me to do what I do. Uh, You know, people say, uh, how many bed nights at home do you have? Uh, Sometimes it's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, with FIFA, with uh, World Aquatics, with WADA, with uh, that. But uh, it's something that I've always enjoyed and uh, I'm glad that I've been able to contribute. It's WADA, it's SAIDS on the one stage. And I've, I've got to, on the back of what Rodney Berman was saying, also just remind South Africans that you were the first South African to be appointed chairman of a FIFA committee. And that was back in 2017. Yeah. I yeah. mean, what an achievement. And we congratulate you for that because I mean, you had basically also moved as the chair of CAF's disciplinary committee. And it was literally the first time, first time after, you know, you find that a committee chair had been drawn from outside of the ranks of FIFA when you stepped in. And that is why I say it is historic in that regard, is that it has context. What is your feeling about it now? Yeah, listen, I was proud to have been appointed as a South African, but I think I was appointed because of the fact that they had seen what we had done in South Africa uh, and they knew that we were capable. You know, people outside Africa have this perception, this wrong perception of, you know, South Africa is a third world. Uh, you, you may, you can't operate, you don't know. Uh, I was able to prove them wrong. Uh, I'd served CAF for nearly 20 years as the chair of the disciplinary committee. I was the chair of the FIFA uh, player status committee. There hasn't been another South African since then uh, or before then. So to have represented South Africa at that level uh, was great. And the people that I met, the the contacts that I made, I still have those contacts and people today. I still speak to them. Um, I was recently appointed to the FIFA organizing committee for the uh, World Beach Football in Seychelles in 2025. Uh, that's because they say, see it, that mm. I can do a job, even at this age. <laughs> so humble, Raymond Hack. Hey, we're just pleased to have you here, man. Also, just looking at what's happening on the YouTube channel, Mana Slikety says, watching and listening, Raymond needs to come back and take over the reins. He is an, an astute administrator. Um, also, Katla Homadiba says, today's show reminds me of the four-part documentary, Pulse of the Nation, our football has got a rich history, and it's very sad to see teams uh, being sold like hotcakes. Um, oh, yeah. I think there's a whole lot that's happening here. Now, the one person that you spoke very highly of, um, and you said you haven't argued with him, uh, you haven't had a bad word to say about him, let's listen very carefully to what Dr. Ivan Koza says in his tribute to Raymond Hack. It's quite remarkable that... Uh I've got to talk about Raymond Heck, who was chairman of this university at some point in his life. But remarkably, Raymond Heck, together with Professor Schloss, were pathfinders, were people who joined the National Soccer League uh, when he was still National Professional Soccer League in and around 1977-78, when nobody thought South Africa would be normal like it is normal today. But uh, Raymond Heck, he's got a history behind him. Raymond Heck was one of the people that are going to be remaining in the annals of history 
for taking a most you know, dramatic and defining moment uh, resolution that gave birth of what we call today the National Soccer League, the Pima Soccer League. In 1985, uh, when you know we had done everything possible as the clubs to persuade uh, the then president of Sanfa, the late Mr. George Tabe, that we must give flexibility in administration and the running of professional football in the country. All the attempts of the teams met with diluted frustration. And I must commend uh, Kaiser, because also in the forefront to make sure that he rallies with the clubs, uh, to make sure that uh, we go and uh, make this decisive you know, action. In the meeting of all the clubs, where everybody must now make a stand as to whether we are moving away from the Nissan Professional Soccer League. A resolution was passed. But in the meeting, nobody was prepared to stand up and pronounce because they were scared that they might be suspended or they will be suspended by George Tabby. Lawrence Ngobane stood up to say we are seceding. And the way it was used strategically, we are seceding to the National Professional Soccer League. And Raymond Heck seconded the motion. Thank you to people like Raymond Heck. Who together with Professor Slosh, notwithstanding the torture, the treatment that we gave them when they came to London Stadium, uh, to Pinoni, uh, to Mlazi Stadium, to Amasho Stadium, uh, when they beat any of those teams from those areas, they get beat, their path is stoned uh, by the same week, following which they come back again to come and play. I remember before we had the Soweto Highway, it was only road, one road uh, from town to Soweto, the main reef road. And there was a police station in Langlaste. Each time they come from Soweto, they could get arrested at that police station because they never had the people to come to Soweto. Uh, Jonathan Slosh, at that time, was about 9, 12 years old. Uh, they were arrested, uh, but still, the following week, they will come back to uh, Orlando Stadium to come and honor the fixture. I want to say today is remarkable uh, that Raymond Heck, you know, is serving a care for FIFA. And I remember when we together with the only fans, and I want to thank Dr. Oliphant uh, for being proactive and also being, you know, uh, uh, reasonable in allowing the Raymond Health to serve the suffer as a reward for the sacrifice that Raymond made together with Professor Slosh uh, to serve football when football was not normal. And we're the first white team to join us and uh, to make things normal. And with that, it was a breaking move on their side. It took so much risk uh, of being arrested or being detained, but they are prepared to sacrifice for us you know, to be part of the building block of building the mighty National Soccer League that we see today. The mighty National Soccer League that we see today. You know, showering you with more of what you deserve, Raymond Ack, which is a big thank you coming through, though, from Dr. Ivan Koza. What's your response to that? I've known Dr. Koza for over 50 years. Um, I've acted as his attorney. Um, he is a man who has a vision. Uh, nothing will stop that vision. Mm. And uh, he, he's there for, for the sport. Uh, uh, what he has done with Orlando Pirates, I remember when he purchased Orlando Pirates. Uh, I remember the effort he put in. Uh, nobody knows the hardships that he's experienced. Um, you know, he, he's had his own personal tragedies with Zodwa, with um, he, his wife, and uh, he, he's... You can't put into words the admiration that I have for that man. Uh, I would follow him. If he had to say to me, go and do this, I would follow him anywhere. And there are not many people that I would do that with. Uh, he is certainly one. Thank you so much, Dr. Ivan Koza. Thank you very much indeed for the tribute, as said in your own words, to Raymond Hack, our guest. Uh, Tulani Njapa also on Twitter saying that under Raymond Hack's leadership, the now defunct Wits University FC was the best in class model after Brake Zuisa Kays the Chiefs. He says, in fact, Wits had a penchant for being Chiefs' hoodoo team back in the 1980s. And it was. You go back, you look at the games that Chiefs played against Wits University. And that was, outside of the, the derby, one of the tightest, most exciting games, most thrilling, maybe at times most brutal, because it was a physical game. <laughs> that they got out of that. Demokho, thanks for your patience, man. Good evening. Oh, good evening, Rob, and good evening to the legend, uh, Raymond Heck. I just want to firstly thank you, Raymond, for your contribution and the manner in which you managed football in this country. 
We are enjoying beautiful football uh, at the moment because of your contribution. And, and I don't think, I think we need to deep, deep, deep as a country to get fine administrators like you. Uh, but my question to you, Raymond, is that what is it that is so lucrative about this football administration position uh, that we are seeing a trend where people who have failed in politics are now finding themselves in football, which for me, I think, is, a, is, a, is an enemy to football if we allow this to continue. I just want to hear your views around that. Thanks. Thank you so, so much indeed. An important question. I think he's answered his own question. It's they don't have a passion for the game. They're there for uh, the funds that they can get or the, what they can get out of it financially as opposed to what they can put into it. And once you, you put finance before passion, uh, you're never going to succeed. I mean, with, with time running out, and it is probably out, let's uh, see if we can squeeze in one more. Good evening, Robert. Uh, I think I must say you never fail to surprise us. And then I think the legend today is totally different. But I'm I'm loving the fact that the administrator um, is a sport fanatic. And then hence that is why he managed to leave when it is the right time. And then big up to him. And then um, all the best. And I wish him all the best for his endeavors. And then... Uh, speedy recovery on that um, the fingers that were crushed. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Raymond Hack. <laughs> People know your history more than most, uh, don't they? And I mean, when you look for solutions, and I say this as a, as, as a parting shot, and, and I thank you very much indeed, because at times we get lost and we always think that when we celebrate legends, it's always people either in the boxing ring, people that are in the water, swimmers, people that are on the football field, the rugby field, or cricket field, or whatever it is. We also celebrate those who are the commentators, the administrators, um, the journalists that have played a role in sport. And yours is multi-sport orientated. You, you've made mention of how we could panel beat things, especially within the biggest game, which has got probably the lowest results, which is football, which is very sad. Uh, every Sunday we watch with a great deal of glee. Eight o'clock, we watch Chasing the Sun, and we see how it is to put together a World Cup winning team. What goes into it? the sacrifices, both the players, the coaching staff. And deep down inside, I think there's always a wish that one day we could get there. One day. I don't know if we can. Are we capable of reaching those heights, Raymond Hack? I think there are people out there who would come back into football, young people who would have that passion. Uh, I believe that you have to look to the future. Uh, I believe there has to be a drastic change uh, in what we've got at the moment. Uh, you know, it's exactly, my kids call me a dinosaur because I can't work a computer the same way. But in our day, we didn't have a computer. Mm. Uh, paper was power. You put everything down in writing. Things change. Football administration has to change. There has to be new people. There has to be young blood. There has to be new ideas. Uh, we have the opportunity now because people can go to university. Education is available. It wasn't there. We used to run football out of the boot of our cars. Mm. Uh, that's not the way to do it. Today, it's a multi-business, a multi-million rand business. Mm. There's corporate governance. There's ethics. Uh, people today can do it. You've just got to find those people who've got the passion and allow them to express their ways. And yes, we'll make mistakes, mm. but in the end... Uh, the game is a beautiful game and the game is bigger than any individual and you've got to allow the game to develop. You've got one minute left. You've got one vote and one name. There's an election right now. I need from you the name of the new SAFA president. I can't give you a name, unfortunately, because there's nobody at the moment that stands out for me who could take over and uh, take us forward. Uh, I'm saying there has to be. Yeah. It's up to the regions to put up somebody uh, who is... Forget uh, the regions. Forget the regions. Well, it's the yeah. only, only I, one. I know. I know. We, we, we're going according to what the rules the say. The Constitution says. Forget the rules. 
Raymond Hank is the rule. Okay. And he has a name. Who would that president be? At the moment, uh, I would get somebody like Lucas who has been there, mm. uh, who has been at the top of the echelons. You cannot be given the freedom of the city of Leeds yeah. if you are nobody. Okay, he's been there. He didn't just get it because of his football ability. He got it because of his personality, the way he deals with people. Uh, and it's someone there. I don't know anyone other than that yeah. at the moment. You know, and we don't crazy. have the Phil Missingers, we don't, the Dr. Yeah. Kamalos, uh, the Joma Sonos. I mean, in his day, Jomo was there, Ace was there. Uh, but unfortunately, age is against them at the moment. Yeah. You need young people to come up and drive football to where it should be. Lucas Khatebe, I hope you're listening, sir, as you normally do. Get ready, get steady, <laughs> go. Thank you so much, Raymond. Thanks. Hashtag MSW live now. on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live at the same time. Hashtag MSW.